Whew, big news, guys. So in the last month, you've probably heard that there have been these really convincing fake ads for VLC, 7-Zip, OBS, popular software that actually lead to malware downloads. And in fact, a popular crypto influencer, NFT God, actually got hacked by one of these. I suspect it was some kind of redline info stealer, which I have covered in the channel before. And he lost all of his digital assets. Every account got hacked. They stole all his money, took control of all of his accounts. It was a complete disaster. And the concerning thing is, it is still happening. Just a few days ago, I've come across this really nice site. It's OBS Studio, but it's not. If you look at the URL, it's obsproject.net. Some of the URLs may be more convincing than this, but this is the one I came across myself just a few days ago, and it's still up and running. And if you click on the Windows version, or any version for that matter, it's gonna download this RAR file. And it says it's a full installer, but once again, it is malware. And as you can see, this is a fake website. So despite all the media coverage in the last month about this issue of malicious Google ads, there's still these sites out there. I'm not sure to what extent Google has cleaned up, but it is worth understanding these threats, how they work. And that is why we're gonna do a deep dive today. We're gonna look at some malicious info stealer samples that have been going around in these advertising campaigns or malvertising campaigns as we like to call them. So hopefully we can shut this down. This is Leo, and you're watching the PC Security Channel. So for starters, let's go ahead and open this OBS Studio package we just downloaded. If we open the RAR file, it has this weird EXE file inside, but I guess, you know, it could be masqueraded better and actually look like OBS Studio. If we take a look at properties, you'll see that it's 314 megabytes. And this is really what gets them around a lot of antivirus scanners and also virus toll scans. A lot of people are going to upload a suspicious exe file that they download into a platform like varstoll.com, see if it's detected by any of the engines. And if it's not, they just assume it's safe. Now that doesn't work with samples like this because once you get past a certain size, a lot of online scanners are not gonna scan it just because of the size limitation because engines will skip files that are too large in the interest of performance. And this is something that attackers have been exploiting a lot recently. Now we're actually going to open this file in a hex editor and look at its content. So this is what is actually written inside the file that's going to be executed. And as you can see, we've got a lot of text that doesn't make any sense and that's okay because it's an exe file, it's a binary, it's not a text file, so you're not gonna be able to read it. But the important thing is if we keep scrolling, you get to a point where the text basically ends and there's just a string of zeros and this is just empty space that's padding to increase the size of the file. Now, in some cases, the padding may be in front. In some cases, the padding may be in between two sections of the file. And that makes it difficult for an antivirus to know. So for example, it starts scanning the file, thinks, oh, this is just an empty file. And then the malware code is somewhere in there. But the AV is not going to scan the whole thing because they're like, we don't want to waste computer resources going through this 300 megabyte file. A lot of AVs will look for the headers of PE files, the standard sections, and then skip everything that doesn't match certain requirements because they think they can't be malicious. But with files like this, you can have incredibly deadly malware packed inside a 500 megabyte file that might be skipped because products think it's like a video file or it's safe, but it's actually executable malware. But what we're gonna do in Hex Editor to trim it down, and this is also a trick you can use at home, this is a free tool. If you suspect you've come across file like this, just select all the zeros, right? So I'm just clicking on it, I'm just dragging it up, and then where the zeros end, I roughly shift, click, and then I hit delete. And what this is doing is this is just getting rid of the padding. And then when we save the file, it's gonna back it up as well. But if we check the properties now, you can see that the size has been reduced to only about 15 megabytes now. And now we can analyze it online and it's probably gonna tell us what type of threat this actually is. So we're gonna go to Varstol now. Drag and drop the file, the 15 megabyte one. And as you can see, we're seeing some detections, surprisingly not as many as I was hoping for. But at least we've got a few. Now looking at Twitter, somebody has actually documented the Notepad++ malware version that was being advertised. And at first, I think it had only about four detections. But over time, the detections went up. 
So in a lot of these cases, the issue is, even though the lifespan of these threats or these malicious websites is not that long, because eventually people will figure out that it is malicious, and then somebody's going to contact Google to take down that malicious ad, and they will. But if you're one of those first few people in that initial 24 to 48 hours, you're kind of screwed. That is good enough for the attackers. They don't need everybody. They just need the first 100 people, and you could be in those 100 people. Now, if you're wondering, well, how would a fake Notepad installer steal all my online credentials? Well, they're going to install something called an info stealer on your computer. And what an info stealer is going to do is it's going to try to read all your saved passwords in the browser. So if you save any passwords, it's going to try to read that. It's going to try to key log anything that you enter potentially. It could also use your authentication tokens, your cookies, anything you have on your system that's allowing you to log into these websites. And in a lot of cases, attackers will have data from multiple sources. Maybe they have your email from a data breach, they got your password from the safe tokens, and now they can log into your account. So it's really important to watch out for info stealers. This is probably the most prevalent public threat that I'm seeing these days. Guardio, our sponsors of this video, also wrote a pretty good article on this topic. And this was all the way back in December. Threat actors have realized that they can use Google's AdWord capabilities as malware campaigns, and it's actually quite profitable. And especially with crypto now being a thing, if they manage to get their hands on a few people's crypto wallets, that can be a good enough payoff for them to fund the next campaign. So I don't think these things are going to go away. This is also how the previous MSI Afterburner malware was spread, the one I made a video about. And just so you understand how the malware actors manage to do this or fool Google is they create a legitimate website that has some sort of like SEO content in the back end. It's been running for a long time and they just select that as the website they want to advertise. Google verifies it, they say it's good to go, but then they set up a malicious redirect from that website into the malware. So this diagram actually does a great job of describing it. So there's a benign advertised site that's perfectly safe. That's what they use in the ad placement, but when you do click on it, they set up a redirect that sends you to the malicious site. So once again, be very careful when you're downloading something. The only thing that matters is the start of the link. So what do you see after HTTPS? And if you don't see the exact name of the site that you're supposed to be visiting, then it could be a malicious redirect. So watch out for that. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share it if you enjoyed it because this is a major threat. And don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. Also check out our Discord server. We'll be doing an event on using AI techniques for threat detection very shortly. A big thank you to Guardio for sponsoring this video. Let's check them out. This video is brought to you by Guardio, a web extension that you can add to any browser to protect you from cyber threats. Once installed, it's going to scan your browser for malicious extensions, notifications, information leaks, or hijackers. It can also look at your emails and figure out if they've been part of any data breaches. And once set up, it is going to actively protect you in real time against any malicious websites that you end up visiting. Cardio is also available for teams and can protect your business from attacks like phishing. In order to demonstrate, we're at Fish Tank, that's a repository of phishing links. These are websites that are going to attempt to steal your credentials as you visit them. But we do have Cardio installed on this browser, so we'll see what it can do. And as you can see, the moment we try to visit the site, it is blocked by Cardio. And because it's based in the web browser, it doesn't really matter where the link comes from. It's going to stop you from visiting it, whether it was in a spear phishing email or you just stumbled across it in the search engine. And it doesn't matter whether it's on Mac or PC, which is pretty important because you can still get phished on Mac. Once installed, you will also have access to a personalized dashboard that's going to show you all the statistics. With Guardio Premium, you can monitor up to five emails for information leaks, so it's a great way to bolster cybersecurity. These days, it's just as important to protect your online assets since everything's interconnected and digital. One of your accounts being compromised can lead to a domino effect, so it's crucial to keep monitoring your emails and passwords and make sure that they're not leaked. So go ahead and check out Guardio using the link in the description or go to guard.io slash PC security. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.